Hey guys, good afternoon. My name is Brandon. It came through my attention from you guys' comments that um, a lot of you guys are looking to get into welding. You guys are looking to uh, start a hobby of welding and it's really, it's a great hobby to get into and you can do it fairly inexpensive. But one of the first things that you have to do is you got to have power. You got to figure out what you want for a welder and what's going to power it up. But with that, I figured I would maybe start a series for you folks that are just starting out. I figured today uh, I would start with a power option and go over that with you. For me, I want a 240 volt power because that way it gives me the ability to run pretty much any welder that I could want. And I've already got, as you saw in the last video, uh, I've got 120 volt uh, shop outlets that allows me so I don't have to plug and replug and all that other nonsense. So let's get started and I will show you about hooking up a 220 volt outlet and then towards the end I will uh, tell you a little bit about the welder that I just pulled out of retirement which was kind of fun and we're going to be doing some upcoming projects with that and I'm super excited so let's get going. So here are some of the things we're going to need for this project. I've got some number six wire, a uh, flush mounted two gang box, a 50 amp flush mount welder outlet, metal cover, some three quarter inch Romex connectors, a 30 amp breaker, and we'll go over that here a little bit in more in detail of why a 30 amp breaker and a 50 amp outlet and 50 amp wire. And I've got an extension cord for my welder. You know, most welders will have this configuration on it. And what this is, is uh, this is a 50 amp, 240 volt uh, welder plug. The weak link within this whole system is this extension cord, okay? Now all cords will have a stamping on them of what uh, the cord is rated for. So you'll see here, this cord is marked for number 10, Number 10 wire is only rated for 30 amps. So why would I want to put this is so this would be the weak link. Why would I want to put a 50 amp breaker on something that can only carry 30 amps? Uh, I wouldn't. Uh, so what my intentions are is, is this cable is rated for 50 amps. The outlet which we're going to mount below the electrical box that's rated for 50. So the cable and the outlet will all be capable of 50 amps and I could put a 50 amp breaker on it at this point. But the minute I plug this cable into it, this extension cord into that outlet, now this is only rated for 30. Well, I'd rather have the breaker trip than burn down the, the shop. You know what I'm saying? Alright guys, now here's a shot of the electrical panel and the outlet below it. You didn't see it in the last video, uh, but I'll put a card up somewhere in there if you guys want to uh, take a look at that. That'll explain why I did all this. And here's a little shot inside. So again, this is the sub panel inside of my workshop. So the first thing we're going to do is snap in our 30 amp breaker. Actually, first thing we're going to do is make sure this is all powered off. Uh, there's no power in this panel. It's completely dead. Uh, it's been verified and we know that. I'm not advocating that you do this. I'm not saying that you should do this. I'm just showing you what I'm doing. If you decide to take on something like this, just know that there's a risk for death or injury. Uh, and if you're not sure about what you're doing, go get an electrician. That's the best way to, that's the best way to go about it. So I've drawn a horizontal line for the top of the box, marking the bottom edge of the box. Now I'm cutting over until I hit the side of the 2x4 stud. Now that I know where it is, I run it right down, a plumb cut right down the side of the stud, hold up the box, mark the left edge, and now I finish out the cut. Now that the hole's all cut, time to put in the box, the, the connector's all in it. Tighten it down, put a level across the top, make sure the box is nice and level, and then tighten the box up. Now it's all ready to start putting some wires in it. Now whenever you uh, have wiring, you want to have a minimum of six inches inside each receptacle box, and you want to have some sheathing exposed in both. Now what you want here is no less than a quarter of an inch of this insulation 
sticking up past this connector. So for this receptacle, we only need three wires. We're going to use the black wire, the red wire, and the bare wire, which is ground. The white wire, which is neutral, we're not going to use that. So what I'm doing here is I'm just wrapping it up with some black electrical tape, and I'm going to neatly coil it up in the box, and I'll do the same thing in the electrical panel above. Now I'm just putting on some uh, non-corrosive additive. It just keeps the connections from corroding. You want these wires to be no less than six inches long, sticking out from that insulation. And here it is, all finished up. And now we'll push it in and uh, get it all buttoned up and tightened in. Throw a level on it, make sure it's nice and level before we get the cover on it. And then we'll put on the cover. Make sure your screws are up and down and everyone think you'll hire an electrician to do it. Right, so we're gonna do the same thing with the neutral that we did down there on the uh, on the receptacle. We're not going to use it. I've capped the end of it and I'm going to coil it up nice and neatly inside the box. Just in case, if we ever were to need it, we'll have it. So I always like to hook up the grounds first and then probably followed by the neutral second and then all the hot wires uh, last. So here I am just making some nice looking neat sweep sweeping bends uh, on the hot wires installing some of that uh, non-corrosive additive onto each wire and again I just kind of hold it up strip out the wire add a little bit of the non-corrosive stuff uh, put it underneath the lug snug it down and then I pull it out just to check it to make sure I have it nice and neatly underneath the lug and then I got it all tightened up guys wait here. I'm going to go turn on the uh, main breaker to power this panel up. Let's hope it doesn't let the smoke out. Oh, that's a plus. So that panel's back on. That outlet's now powered. All right, guys, I just changed one thing around to make it a little different. I took this receptacle and I just flipped it 180. Before I had the ground prong on the bottom. I flipped it around so that the ground prong is on the top, and this is why, because the ground prongs on the receptacles are on top. That way the cord can come down and not the way it was before, it would have had to be like that. I didn't want that, so, so there. That's just a little bit better. Let's try it out. So I was burning 6011 rods on this thing, learning how to weld probably 25 years ago, maybe 30, close to that. And this thing will burn a 6011 rod really well. Uh, for those of you that haven't, this is similar to like a uh, buzz box. That's what they call these. It's a uh, AC, uh, AC welder. They refer to them as a buzz box. Uh, they have their pros and cons, but now they make a 7018 rod that is designed to burn on an AC welder, which I've yet to use. So, uh, 6011, all around pretty decent rod. It doesn't make a very pretty weld, but it burns in nice. It'll, this will also run, you know, a 6013, and I'm curious to try the 7018s. So I think we're going to pick up a box of uh, 7018s and give it a whirl. Not today, but uh, we're going to be doing some upcoming projects with this. It's going to be kind of a nostalgia thing, if anything. And these are real affordable. I, I don't know as if this welder is made anymore. I doubt it. Uh, and if they do make it, it's probably not made with the internals that this has. An AC welder 
is a pretty cheap welder that you can uh, you can get into or a buzz box like I said uh, bringing me back to my younger days when I was uh, a lot younger and uh, maybe a lot stronger not as wise though but I probably thought I was I hope you enjoyed this video this was a fun video to do at least for me it brought back a lot of memories like I said I probably haven't struck an arc with that thing in 15 years and I bet it was 30 years ago that I was learning on that thing and I have run hundreds of pounds of of rod through that welder so it's it's got a lot of uh, it's got a lot of meaning to me when I'm when I'm using that thinking back about all the uh, all the things that I was doing with that welder and all the stuff that I was building just as a uh, just as a young kid you know I was probably 15 16 years old uh, when I started when I started out um, using that welder so you know that's that's got a lot of uh, things you know my dad and I used to build stuff together we used to build race cars um, I built trailers we you know all kinds of stuff so it just just got a lot of memories and it's gonna be real fun to incorporate this I think into some of my videos so like I said this is what I learned to weld on that little AC buzz box you know 30 years ago I taught myself how to do it you know if I can figure it out I'm sure you guys can too so I'm gonna kinda talk to you guys a little bit in the next upcoming videos as a series about MIG welding and I'm gonna talk to you about stick welding we've kinda covered today about necessities as far as power so to recap that figure out where you want to weld put yourself in a 240 volt outlet and make sure you got yourself a couple at least two dedicated 120 volt outlets so that way if you pick yourself up a uh, MIG machine a 120 volt MIG machine you're all covered you've got a dedicated outlet for that the other outlet can be used for your grinders or whatever else you don't have to worry about uh, tripping breakers all the time and if you have a 240 volt receptacle welder outlet like we have here like we just put in today that'll allow you to run pretty much any welder uh, if you ever get a plasma cutter we're not going to talk about safety too much today but make sure you got a good helmet and make sure you wear a respirator um, the older me would probably tell the younger me that I should have worn a respirator a lot more cross my fingers I haven't had any health um, problems due to it um, but that's not to say that I won't down the road so respirator and a mask some safety gear and you should be good to go so I hope you guys like this uh, be sure to check me out on Facebook and uh, Instagram I'll leave the links to those down in the uh, bottom if this is something that you like please don't forget to rate comment and subscribe thanks guys be sure to check back we're gonna have all kinds of fun new videos coming up see ya come, come, come.